Pokemon cards are everywhere. In the last few years, just about everyone seems to be buying them, but not all cards are created equal. Today, we're talking about one special card that's been banned from production entirely. No copies of it have been made in nearly two decades, and it's all because of a man who can bend spoons with his mind. Meet Uri Geller, a world-famous magician and self-proclaimed psychic. Through simply the strength of his mind, he claims he's able to bend spoons, make clocks run faster, and locate objects inside sealed aluminum cans, along with other paranormal activities. Geller has had quite a few critics in his over 50 year career, some who have even been able to duplicate all his tricks not with their brains, but with simple stage magic. His appearance on The Tonight Show where Geller attempts to display his power to Johnny Carson might be one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever watched. We this, have only met- This scares me. This, this scares you. you? I'll try when I'll really feel up to it, okay? So, um, would you like to, uh, Try anything here? Why don't you ask me more questions? Usually I pass if I don't feel for it, but I'm, if I'm wrong, then I'll be wrong. Okay, let me rest a little, all right? All right. Mm -hmm. Would you like to go on to the other experiment? Uh, let me try. I'm not, this one is not over yet. Uh, I'm going to no, come back to No, I'm sure not. Can you, if it's been there? Yes. Yes, it is. Of course, this is a, this is not a big bend, Johnny. Mm -hmm. Do we have there, to, I had no. Can we cut away again and still come back here? Yeah, right now I'm feel I'm feeling being pressed, and then I can't. Well, I'm not trying to press you. I really not. Uh, you no, know, you're only I'm, telling me. Well, will you try that or that? Or that? Well, I thought that was the idea of uh, <laughs> of. Uh, no, I, I'm not. No, I'm not trying to put you down. Well, it doesn't leave us much, does it? Uh, <laughs> Despite not displaying really any paranormal ability, this interview made him even more successful. The public said if it was a magic trick, he would be able to do it every time, and his failure makes his gift seem even more real. When his abilities worked, Geller was really good at what he did, and the world couldn't get enough of it regardless of if it was real or not. He's done countless performances, deals with brands, has appeared in movies and TV shows, and his spoon trick is referenced all over pop culture. Not to mention, just 12 years into his career, he was described as a millionaire several times over. That's not too bad for someone who's just famous for bending spoons. It's December 1998. Geller is in Tokyo, Japan for a TV special he's filming. After the special was finished, he was approached by children holding the Pokemon card Kadabra. Kadabra is a psychic Pokemon who holds a spoon. Geller noticed the striking resemblance and was furious. In his own words, he said, the last thing I want is for a whole new generation of children to think that I am or that spoon spoon bending is evil. So what? It's an animal thingy holding a spoon that has brain powers. What could have possibly made him so angry? For starters, every Pokemon has an English name and a Japanese name. The Japanese names typically have more meaning because Pokemon is from Japan and translating those names to English usually doesn't work. Quite a few of these Japanese names are references to real people. Famous musicians, boxers, and you guessed it, even magicians. Kadabra is the weird middle child of three Pokemon. Abra Kadabra Abra and Alakazam. Abra's Japanese name translates to Casey, which is based on famous magician Edgar Casey. Alakazam's name, Fudin, although it doesn't sound like it, is based on Harry Houdini. And surprise, Kadabra translates into Young Garer, which is Uri Geller's name with a letter switched around. Looking at the cards, though, there's not much relatively wrong with them. There's nothing that should set him off. However, in the lawsuit, Geller claimed that the issue with them is the star on Kadabra's head and the wavy lines on his belly both of which he said had connections to the German SS from World War II. Nintendo fired back saying that that wasn't the case at all. In fact, the symbols are very common in the world of psychics. The symbols are exact matches for Zener cards, which are cards used to test if you have extrasensory perception, also known as ESP. Truly, the only thing I can maybe give him in his defense is this card, Dark Kadabra. It was released a month prior to Geller's visit. Now it's called Dark Kadabra because this one belongs belongs to the evil team Rocket. He probably took it to mean evil Uri Geller, assuming he ever even saw it. About a year after the incident, he began his process of suing Nintendo for $100 million. 
By this time, the story had changed a bit. I'm unsure if it's the news outlets just getting the story wrong, but Geller apparently saw the card not after taping a special, but while shopping. Which I guess could have happened after the special. Anyway, he entered a Pokemon Center, the manager bowed, and he was then rushed by children chanting what sounded like Uri Geller while holding Kadabra cards. Anyway, that's besides the point. Uri was going all out. He had lawyers in Tokyo, Europe, the US, Australia, the list just goes on and on. They were all working with him on this case. On the other side of this, Nintendo was seemingly denying everything. They said to their staff's knowledge they had never created a Pokemon based on a real person, and the symbols most definitely do not represent anything about the German SS. My favorite quote though is from a British Nintendo spokesman. I can't imagine Uri Geller would have such a following in Japan that they would name a Pokemon card after him. I don't know if that was supposed to be a burn, but it's pretty funny. Now, I couldn't find exact details, but Uri managed to win the lawsuit. However, in 2008, the Pokemon anime director said that the case was still ongoing and Nintendo had simply put the card aside for now until an agreement could be met. So it's likely they settled out of court. As a result of all that, since 2003, not a single Kadabra card has been printed and he hasn't appeared in the anime since then. Weirdly enough, he still exists in Pokemon games, but maybe they just assumed Uri wouldn't play them or that just wasn't part of the suit. All of the sudden, almost 20 years after this whole thing went down, Uri tweets this out, I am truly sorry for what I did 20 years ago. Kids and grown-ups, I am releasing the ban. It's now all up to hashtag Nintendo to bring back my hashtag Kadabra hashtag Pokemon card back. It will probably be one of the rarest cards now. Much energy and love to all. So let's break this down. After 20 years, a man who thought Nintendo stole his identity and put it on an evil occult monster is now saying it's all good. Not to mention he called it my Pokemon Kadabra card, which is a little odd after you sued them over it. I know he says he's sorry, but where's the motive for this after 20 years? Oh, it's right there in the tweet. Uri Geller is opening a museum. Soon after his original tweet, he posted another where he opens a trunk full of Kadabra merchandise from when he went to the lawyers during the lawsuit originally. Not gonna lie, this trunk is really cool. I would love to get a close-up look at this thing one day. A few days later, he does an interview with Verlicify, a Pokemon YouTuber, about the whole situation. Out of the almost 15 minute video, maybe two minutes are actually about it, and the rest is more or less him just advertising his museum, which again, honestly looks pretty cool. Now, Geller claims he did all this because people were constantly emailing him asking for him to release the ban, which I mean, sure, it's probably true, but I believe the main motive could be that he just wanted a cool display in his museum and the publicity that would come with lifting the ban. It's been a long time since Geller was a worldwide phenomenon, and this ban lifting likely got him more media attention than he's had in years. In fact, not long after he lifted the ban, he even got a letter from the Pokemon Company CEO thanking him. Anyway, regardless of the reason, I'm happy he lifted the ban, and although almost a year later, no new Kadabra cards have been printed, I'm sure they'll return someday. If you enjoyed this video, you should watch the one I made about the creator of Flappy Bird. It was the number one game in the App Store, but it also ruined his life. If that sounds interesting to you, check it out on screen right now.